Hey guys, it's Chris Boot with Cheat the Game coming back at you, and today we're going to be taking another look at Noclip. I've been working on some other top tutorials, but I'm just not quite ready to uh, present them yet. Uh, so I called up my friend Bite Ninja, and he has given permission for another uh, particular game hack he's done to share with you guys. And due to the overwhelming response of last week, Bite Ninja is happy to report that he will be opening this channel back up uh, this coming July. And you can be prepared for some great game hacking tutorials that will be on here. And you know, the past two lessons were based off his particular uh, game hack. So uh, you can expect that to come in July. So get over here and subscribe. Hit the little bell icon and you'll know exactly when he opens it back up. We want to thank you all. Uh, for coming over here and encouraging him to open his channel back up and he was very happy about that he it totally shocked him shocked both of us actually but uh you guys are awesome i want to thank you so much for doing that okay i just want to go ahead and bring cheat engine on up and we're taking a look at just a simple game uh the simpsons hit and run game it's an older game uh, back in 2007 matter of fact you have to run this game in compatibility mode for windows me to even get it to run on windows 7 8 or 10. So uh, we're going to take a look at that, but it's a real good game to do it on, you know, to kind of explain what we're talking about here. And this is a continuation based off my other new clip that we did in the past, and I'll put the link for that one up in the description. It was a little more complex, but it just goes to show the same type techniques can get you what you want. You know, you can practically use these techniques for any game uh, to help get you what you want. Is these things going to work in every single game? I, no, not really. But, you know, it just gives you some ideas of things you can try and what you need to look for. And that's what we're basically showing here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and attach to the game. Yeah, forgive me. I haven't been feeling too well lately. So uh, kind of a little bit ill right now. So you just have to forgive my voice. I appreciate it. <laughs> but uh, what he did is mostly, you know, you, we're trying to find some type of a flag value. A lot of times I say go ahead and try to find it on a four byte or bite but he found it on float and it is a float type flag and if you're having trouble finding a specific flag you want to try it on float also we're going to go ahead and click on simple values only also so this is kind of what you want to do you want to come up to a wall and what we're going to do is get our character to press up against that wall then we're going to pause the whole game now i've set my hotkeys in cheat engine if you don't know how to do that go to edit settings and you're going to come over here to hotkeys and what I did is I put the pause on the numeric uh, dot on the keypad. And we're going to be using that. You definitely, when you're trying to do a, a, a no clip hack or a wall hack or something like that, you want to be able to pause the game when you're touching the wall. If you let go of the controller, uh, the flag may change again. So we want to pause it while he's actually running into the wall. So that's what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and uh, start this. So let me come over here to the game and unpause it. So make sure we walk around. And what we're going to do is we're going to run into the wall and we're going to pause it. Okay. So let's run into the wall and then pause it while he's still running. You see, he's still running into the wall. All right. So what we want to do is come over here, put it on unknown initial value, do a first scan. The game's still paused. We're going to unpause it. Get back over to it okay there we go and let's make sure he's completely off the wall now and then we're going to go change value now i'm using my hotkeys for this also so i got hotkeys set up for uh, different things usually the ones i use are increased value decreased value changed and unchanged those are the ones i use the most so i have those on hotkeys as well you can set those in the same section so now that we've hit change, we're just going to run around a little bit and hit unchanged because we know that he's not touching a wall collision field right now. The only collision field that we're touching is the ground collision, but the wall should have its own separate collision flag to stop him from moving in an X or excuse me, to stop him from moving like on the X coordinate or the Z coordinate. All right, let's run back to the wall, and we'll rinse, wash, and repeat. Let's run into the wall, and I'm going to hit pause while he's running. I'm going to hit changed. And take a look. We're down about 785. And I'm going to hit unchanged. Let's go back to the game. Let's unpause it first. Now we're completely off the wall. Now we're going to hit changed again. And basically, we just rinse, wash, and repeat. Now I'm just hitting unchanged. 
And usually what I do in this scenario uh, is I'll start looking at my zeros. I'll, I'll go to the pause menu and you see how things are changing. Well, we know none of those could be it, so now we're going to hit unchanged. That'll really weed them down. And what I start looking at is zeros when we're off the wall. For off the wall, I'm looking usually looking for a zero. So I'm going to add all these to the list here. And let's just see what's going on with these values when we go to the wall. So I'm going to hit the wall. And I'm going to get off the wall. And we see a bunch of them turning. All right. That very top one is staying in perfect sync every time I hit the wall and every time I come off the wall. And you see we got other, and look, when I'm just running around, the others are changing. But see those ones? All these are changing. So the only one we really got is that top one. So that's the one I'm interested in. All the others are changing. We don't need those. I didn't mean to get rid of that one. I think it was this one. Let's go back and check it. All right, let's go back. I think that's the one. See a negative one when we hit a tree it's like a different negative value I believe it has to do with what type of collision we're touching so what we want to do is when you get down to some flags you want to try basically there's no way you can really freeze that value and it tell the game to walk through the wall sometimes it may sometimes it won't but you're not gonna really be able to tell that you got it and if you see here the game's right it faster than cheat engine can so you're not going to say, well, I can't find it. Uh, this is when it becomes a trial and error process. You're going to have to go in there, try some of these different values, and uh, go in there messing around with some calls, and they try knocking out some opcodes, and, and see what happens. Sometimes you may have found it and not even realized you found it. So that's how hard these things can be. It's, that's why you see very few cheat tables with no clip on it it's extremely hard to find even in simple games all right sorry about that guys let's go ahead and put the debugger on it and we're going to find out what accesses this address let's go back to the game all right and we see that something is constantly watching it now and i'm not hitting a wall or anything like that so we see that that opcode up top is constantly watching that flag so let's see what happens when we go to the wall and as soon as we run into the wall, now it's met some kind of condition and it's going down these call structures here. So this is where we want to take a look. What We want to see what called these functions when we touch the wall. That'll help get us to the area we want. So what made this start when we touch the wall? So that's where we're going to it. So what I'm going to do is go directly to it and I'm going to put a break and trace on it and see what called what started these functions so right click on it and I turn all three of these on just so I can see more information we're going to go ahead and put the break and trace on it making sure if there's other addresses going through this opcode then you have to put a conditional break and trace on it that no others are going through it so as you can see this area is not even being accessed right now until we actually hit the wall. So let's hit the wall. Let it do its break information. All right. And I'm telling you, I don't care what game it is. This is the kind of things you want to look for when you're looking in the debugger. You want to look for something constantly watching it and then see if anything pops up when you hit that collision field something had to call that collision or some condition had to be met for the collision opcodes to pop up or for the new areas to be called and that's what you're trying to find when you do any type of wall hack so sometimes it's easy sometimes it's hard most of the time it's hard let's go ahead and expand all so we know that this is never being accessed until we actually hit the wall so what's calling it so let's go back up the call structure all right, so we double click on it and we come to this call and we can see exactly what's going on here. We got a test going on, which is similar to a compare, just a different type of math. And let's see, it looks like it's testing 
to see if we're actually touching a wall or not, touching a collision field or not. And if we do touch a collision field, that's when this call activates that calls this particular function over here. So what would happen if you can take a look, we see a jump if equal that meets the condition to jump over that call if we do that. And this is, we're just experimenting. We don't really know if this is it or not. I don't know. So that's when we go in there and experiment. Well, let's see what happens if we jump over that call. What if that condition is never met and we just jump over it? Or what if it's always met, I should say. It's jump if equal. So it's going to jump if that equals. Let's always make it jump. And let's see what happens. So let's go back to it. Now let's take a look. Now watch. We went right through the wall. So we definitely know that that was the flag collision field. And we can go through everything, most things anyway. I thought this was a really good game to show no clips on of what you exactly you need to look for. And a lot of times, you, like I said earlier, you don't even know that you found the correct flag because there's really no indicator. So you just got to experiment get in there and experiment with some of them and just see a lot of these things are found by accident then on purpose so get in there and and do that go up to walls and stuff and you try to weed them down as much as possible and try different flag values you want to right off the bat you want to look for zeros when you're not touching anything that that's usually where you're going to find them now you will find them on four bytes, you will find them on regular bytes, occasionally you'll find them on floats. You want to try all three if you're not having any luck. But these are the type of scenarios you want to look for, like in this debugger here. When you do a no clip, this is the scenario you want to look for. Where something is being accessed when you hit the wall. Is it going to be like that for every game? No. But most of the time you're going to run into this situation that'll be correct. All right, so now is all left for us to do. Since we know that's all we have to do is modify that one jump, we take note of the bytes, EBOF, and we want to put it back to the way it was, which was jump if equal. And we see that it is jumping if equal to a static address, which is fine. That means we don't have to do uh, any type of mem copy or anything like that. So we can go ahead and do a direct byte manipulation, which means that we're not going to allocate memory for our cheat. We're just going to affect the bytes directly. We're going to change that 74 to an EB is what we want. Let's just go ahead and uh, bring up our auto assemble, and we're going to go with an AOB injection. I'm just going to put no clip one. And I'm getting rid of all this. Uh, out, we're not allocating memory. We don't need the labels. We don't need none of that. I am going to keep my register symbol. Get rid of the return. We don't need that. We just need the nucleate and the dialloc. We don't need that. All we need, we don't even need all this. We just need those two bytes. Those are the only two bytes we're manipulating and only really one of those. So basically what I'm going to do is just copy this, paste it here, and we're going to change that to the EB, which is a jump. That's byte notation for jump. 7-4 is byte notation for jump if equal. And that's really all we had to change. Let's go ahead and put that onto the cheat table. And let's just take a look at it, make sure that it does what we need it to when we turn it on. When we turn it on, let's watch the bytes. And you see it changes to a jump. Let's make sure it changes back. Jump up equal. So let's go test out our script. We'll smash escape. And right now we should not be able to walk through a wall, which we cannot. We want to get out of here quick. So let's go cut our cheat on, which we'd normally set to a hotkey. Turn that on. Go back. And now, boom. We're through the wall. And we can continue on with our game. And I want to thank Byte Ninja right quick uh, for his help in this and for his hard work. And we want to uh, tell him we cannot wait for his channel to come back up. Uh, I learned a lot from him myself. So, and uh, he'll be back up this July. So get on over there and subscribe. Let him know we really appreciate all that he's uh, let CTG have and 
and uh, I'd really do appreciate it. I want to make sure I got uh, something up for you guys this week, and uh, I, I had saw that on the uh, Facebook channel that he had posted, so I just asked him, I said, you mind if I present that to CTG members? He said, oh, shoot, man, go right ahead. And that's how cool he is. So get over there and subscribe to his channel if you don't mind. We would appreciate it. We'll go ahead and thank my partners right quick. These guys keep the cheap game running. Without these guys, I'd have to pull it up a long time ago. We thank you so much for your kind donations every month. And it really does help us a ton. It truly does. So thank you so much for doing that. But I'm going to go ahead and cut on out of here. And I'm still working on some other uh, tutorials that will be coming out in the very near future. We've got a fly cam that we're going to be doing. And also, we're going to be doing uh, finding a secret debug menus in games. Uh, and we're going to have to use X64 Debugger to do that. And that's off of a special tutorial by Sunbeam that we're going to be doing that he's given us permission to do. So you can look for that in the very near future also. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and cut on out. You guys take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, doesn't mind cheating you. You all take care. Now.